Hello friends, this is Dan and I have a message for you from the book Do You Believe in Growth? Subtitle Why Russia and China Keep Rising While U.S. Society Stifles Innovation So I think it's important uh, to look at the meanings of a couple words uh, Well, the first one imperialism a global system of degrowth that's a one little section here in the booklet we do not live in the era of individual factory owners selling their products we live in the age of gigantic corporations tied in with banks stretching their tentacles all across the planet this global system of trusts cartels and syndicates dominating the economy not just in their home countries but the planet itself is called imperialism. Let me repeat that. The global system of trusts, cartels, and syndicates dominating the economy, not just in their home countries, but the planet itself, is called imperialism. Imperialism is defined by the dominance of financiers. The age of captains of industry like Henry Ford or Andrew Carnegie is long gone. We now live in the era of bankers and the primary way that the small clique of bankers that dominates the Western system today stays in power is by, by holding back economic development. While it would be normal for those who own businesses to want economic growth, the ultra-wealthy monopolists maintain their power by enacting degrowth. They want to impoverish the world and keep it poor so that they stay on top. The people of Mexico have been growing their food since before Christopher Columbus arrived in 1492. However, free trade policies of the North American Free Trade Agreement, that we all know NAFTA, uh, put an end to that. The Mexican farming sector has been eliminated. Mexico has been degrown, and Mexicans import their food from American agribusiness corporations. More than a century ago, the British Empire burned the vast textile looms, textile looms of India and forced the people who had been weaving for centuries to import their cloth from Britain. And the other word besides imperialism is maybe a rather new word in the context of how we're using it now, innovationism. Uh, and it is a way to redefine in modern terms what would be an alternative to the system now that is primarily, if not entirely, based on imperialism. And innovationism allows us to think in terms of growth in the economy, abundance for all, right? And anti-imperialism not having to deal with these humongous organizations that rig the system for their own benefit. And I, I mentioned before that I wanted to bring up some t statistics that I came across in 2022, uh, two years ago, September of 2022. And it was, it was from the Congressional Budget Office itself over a 30 year period. Uh, some of it was just focused on 2019. Some of it was from 1989 to 2019. And I'll start with the first one because similar to what I was looking at during Occupy Wall Street uh, era and that the top 1% of the population shares and shares about one third of the wealth. I think it's something like maybe 40% now, you know, somewhere in that area. But what I noticed that would be kind of shocking would be um, the bottom 50% of the population, the bottom 50% of the population from 1989 to 2019, basically there was no change. They shared 2% of all the wealth that we create together, 2%. Wow, think about that. Bottom 50% of the population now would be something like what, uh, 160, 70 million people share 2% of all the wealth. And here's one to think about. The top 10% of 
as of 2019, shares shared, because this is pre-pandemic, 72% uh, of all the wealth that we create together, by the way. Think about that as food for thought. I know economics can seem to be kind of boring, but that's pretty shocking. That should make us even more involved in organizations like the Center for Political Innovation to pick up where maybe Occupy Wall Street left off as far as making this kind of message one of the most important messages. People can realize, you know, um, how much they've been screwed, basically. You know, you want to know why wages flatlined? You never can seem to get, you, you, you know, uh, keep up with the inflation or the rising costs. There you go. It's set up that way. It's not what people think it is. And it is capitalist because people will brag about how that's the dominant system, right? But that's the system that is rigged that created these kind of circumstances. Imperialism and vast amounts of wealth going to the very top. And of course, you know, that top 10%, I mean, um, they're not the ultra rich, you know, in all the 10%, obviously the bottom end of the 10%, they're not the ultra wealthy, right? But there needs to be a certain portion of the population, right, that's comfortable so that there isn't, uh, you know, a revolution. But revolution also is not necessarily a violent revolution. There can be just revolutions in the mind, revolutions of, of the heart, you know, and a transformation in your own spiritual experience. That also can be a, a major change, right? So if we have an enlightenment on a large scale, think about that. And it, would, it wouldn't be violent. It would just be an awakening uh, to enlightening uh, type of society which we all should be a part of and contributing to. So imperialism and innovationism. This is Dan. Have a great day. And as always, I'm going to say, live in the present moment and peace now.